right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a beautiful San Diego blue skies. Can't complain. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Sima Dahl, who is in Chicago. Blue skies there, Sima? Absolutely blue skies and the warmest winter I can ever remember. Excellent. So Sima spent over 20 years as a B2B corporate marketer, winning uh, lots of awards for branding. And now she has taken this work and is now helping and showing people how to forge their personal brand using something that Sima calls the sway factor. So Sima, let's, let's get straight into it. Right. What is the sway factor? The sway factor is a set of behaviors that help others understand and remember how you wish to be known, who you are, what you do, and what makes you special. And if the people in your circles, in your enterprise, in your networks don't know that, then you have no personal brand and they'll make one up for you. Uh, I see that's an interesting point uh, to start off with right there. So what you're saying is everybody has a brand. They just, it just may be one that's given to them by other people. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I, my work started because I had a, a, a volatile career as a high tech marketer, you know, mm -hmm. the, the industry when it first, and I wasn't on the coasts, I was in sure. what we called the Silicon Prairie. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. careers were different. And I was always sort of positioning myself for the next role, the next job, mergers, acquisitions, dot com sure. plus. So I was a marketer marketing myself. And it it's something I just learned to do over time. And then when I started my business, I realized salespeople, business owners needed to do the same. And then my clients started telling me they were having retention issues because their high potentials didn't know how to market themselves within the enterprise. So right. I'm now a full firm believer. Everybody needs to be increasing their sway factor. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more because at the end of the day, uh, we're the, we should be our biggest cheerleaders. We should be the ones who are looking after, you know, how we appear to the market. Um, but the thing is, uh, the thing is, Simma, is often people, when they hear this idea of branding and personal branding, and nowadays people think, oh, that means I should just get my LinkedIn profile up to speed. And they just leave it at that. Yeah. Well, that's a great place to start because <laughs> most of them are abysmal. Uh, you know, I want your LinkedIn profile to work as hard, if not harder than you do. But it starts with determining how you want to be known mm -hmm. and being really clear and concise. Some of the work I do with, with large teams starts with articulating your brand value. And, you know, here's the thing. With branding, you can only be known for so much at once. The right. rest of the story has to evolve over time. So it's hard for most people to come up with those 15 words of how you want to be known, trusting that when they, when they become known for that, they can expand upon it. But that's where it really starts. And then when I ask you, John, what do you do, you know, in the airplane, you know, people mm -hmm. call it your elevator pitch, but right. you don't really talk to strangers in elevators anymore. <laughs> <laughs> how do you answer? You know, if I said, I'm Simadal. I'm the founder and CEO of Sway Factory Inc. What does that even yeah. mean? I mean, I think so from, you know, from raising your hand in the community, in your industry to volunteer, to get engaged, to author content, to speak at conferences. Some of, some of that is very scary to some people, but that's really when you are catapulting your career onto the fast track. Yeah, and I think you said something interesting there as well about the fact is uh, that you can't be too much at once, that you have to evolve it over time. And I think that's where people struggle, because if you said to you know, somebody like, you know, focus in on one area or, or a few things that you really want to emphasize about yourself, people struggle with that because they'll, they'll come up with a list of 50 things. But if you ask them to give you three or five, they really struggle with making those choices. Yeah, my favorite is this salesperson who comes to me and says, you know, 80% of my clients are mid-market in the Midwest. 
but I have some large enterprise accounts on either coast. So mm-hmm. I want to position myself as all things to any size organization. And then I have to talk them off that ledge because it's a suicide. Nobody mm-hmm. wants somebody who's good at everything for everyone. They want you mm-hmm. to understand their business, their unique needs as they perceive them. So I will counsel somebody like that to say, uh, while we serve clients of all sizes, our, you know, our, our majority of our business is with or I specialize mm-hmm. in. And, and yeah. it leaves the door open for other opportunity for bluebirds, but it lets the, the target buyer that you know you can close feel at home. Yeah, and that's a great and that's a great example of what I was saying is about people make people hate to make choices because they say, Well, can't I just be both? You know, be so much right. better because that way I don't miss out on anything. But you're correct, is we want to engage with somebody who we feel has some expertise or focus in the area that we're in, right? Yeah, I worked for several years for an enterprise resource planning software company, ERP. It's difficult to sell. It's very expensive. And if we're going to be honest, it seldom does all the things we promise you it will do. Sure. You'll spend the rest of your life tweaking with it, right? And people replace their ERP systems once every 10 years, according to mm-hmm. Amazon. So I'm staying in front of target buyers for up to a decade. So I just get invited to the dance. And I will never forget when we had a, a hot lead on the line, hot prospect, we thought perfectly qualified. He manufactured a dried bean product. And we had a we had a bean case study. Imagine, you know, mm. a similar exact market. And he said, no, that's a that's a wet bean manufacturer. I'm dried bean. It's a different. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, how specific do we have to get today? But we do. There's just too yeah. many voices. Well, you're correct. There's too many voices, and unfortunately. Uh, rightly or wrongly, where everybody is in every company and product generally nowadays is seen as a commodity and seen as eh, there's a little bit of maybe there's a little bit of difference here and there, but there's but consumers and customers don't perceive a massive amount of difference. So one of the few ways that you can differentiate yourself is by how you engage with them and what kind of expertise and additional thing you can bring to the table. Yeah, I believe it's truly your people. So I was mm-hmm. just working with uh, 150 uh, insurance producers, account executives for an insurance firm, commercial insurance, you can get that anywhere. Yeah. Right? So it's the subject matter experts. It, it's how they stay top of mind. It's how they say, you're going to get you know, the, the feel of a small company with the resources of a large company. And I know your industry inside and out. Mm-hmm. And, and that gives me, that mitigates any perception of risk. I haven't even taken your phone call. And we all know some 60% or more of the research that happens before you get invited to a conversation happens online. So yeah. when I know I have a call with you, I'm looking you up and I'm mm-hmm. making some decisions about how long I even want to chat with you. Uh, you know, whether you come off as having, you know, character or some charisma, certainly your competence, your expertise, and, and that's the world we live in. So it's our job to, I think, build an army of brand champions. You know, I've gotten leads from people. I, the craziest one last year was a woman who contacted me and said, um, a good friend of mine who works AV right. heard you speak three years ago. Oh, wow. And, 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 and the one that I got from somebody I went to high school and I hadn't seen in 102 years. How did those people, you know, come to know who I am and what I stand for? Yeah. Online, right? Absolutely. And, uh, and obviously, you were, obviously you were doing something um, really good that you had the AV person actually pay attention. Oh, I was they were just, no. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm saying, I'm saying that's a great compliment because normally the AV people are just happy if nothing breaks down. They're not really listening to anything. Um, but, it's a, but it's a good point is, uh, is I, I mean, I think, and I think people know this kind of intellectually, but I'm not sure how many people carry that. I mean, how many people, especially salespeople, to say how many of them Google themselves on a regular basis to see what comes up, to see what's showing up when, 
a prospect who Googles them and how much are they paying attention to the results uh, of, of, what's, of what's showing up? Because, yeah, you're, you're correct. I mean, nobody nowadays is going to engage with somebody without checking them out first. Exactly. I mean, I always make a joke like everybody's looking at you, certainly your competition and yep. your prospects. Sometimes your clients, you know, you get assigned to a new account. They don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. You have a merger and acquisition, all your new colleagues, people who are looking to work for your firm. I think the, the personal brand becomes an extension of the employer brand. And we all yep. know how difficult it is right now to attract top talent. So. For sure. I, it's, you know, even your Tinder dates, right? <laughs> Everybody's looking you up and you have an opportunity to pre-sell. And what I find is people, not only is it awkward and uncomfortable to write and speak about ourselves, mm -hmm. but yeah. people perceive it as somehow impolite. And I'm on a mission to flip the switch and have people perceive personal branding as an act of benevolence. What if you saw yourself as having enough value that sharing it with others actually had you sleeping better at night? You know, like yeah. really, I can help you, but I can't mm -hmm. if you don't know I exist, right? Yeah, and and I think that's I think that's an I think that's a fantastic mission because yeah, I mean I totally I totally agree with you. It's that idea of you have to be your biggest cheerleader because nobody else is going to be and you have to try and stand out and you, you want people to know who you really are and what you have to offer. And yeah, I know it's daunting for some people and you're correct. Some people think, well, it's a little bit, that's fine for somebody like that, but you know, right. I'm a little bit more and you go, well, then you're just going to get lost. Unfortunately, you can only operate in the environment that you're in, not the one that you would like to be in. I mean, poor Jack Welch, who uh, unfortunately oh. um, died, uh, the last couple of days, I, I always used his quote as like, is face reality as it is, not as it was or how you would like it to be. And I just think that's the way. And it's, and it's the same for this. We live in a world where people are going to perceive your personality, your brand and everything by what they see online. So you can either resist that or you can take control of it. Right. And even in an offline setting, you know, when yeah. People who are um, trying to sell themselves in the enterprises as a candidate worth promoting, worth listening to, just the art of speaking up in a meeting or asking mm -hmm. for coffee with the with the VP in the next silo mm -hmm. over, so you can see what's going on in your department and and express your intentions of growth. It's just a lost art, and yeah. I hear people say it's more difficult for women. Or I grew up in a in a in a household where English was a second language or you mm -hmm. didn't speak until spoken to, or, you know, and half the time I'm talking to people, they're talking too fast and too softly. I can't even hear them, <laughs> you know, slow yeah. down and be comfortable, you know, expressing your thoughts, asking those tough questions. It's the only way people get inside your brain. Yeah, and it is, and I mean, it's just an unfortunate, I mean, it's a, it's just a reality of life. As I said, if you don't push yourself forward, Nobody will. And, and I think, unfortunately, a lot of people come into companies and they think, OK, well, if I do a good job at what I'm doing, my manager will see it. Other people will notice it and then I will get I will get rewarded for it and I'll get promoted. And, and then they and then they wonder why the person over from them uh, actually right. did get promoted, who maybe isn't as good as them. But is certainly, you know, networks and all of that. And you just say, well, again, you can say. I shouldn't have to do that. Or you can say, that's just the reality of life. I better learn how to do that. That's right. It's, it's, it's an, I think it's the lost soft skill. It's mm -hmm. being able to articulate your value in a way that feels good to you and isn't over the top, is not impolite mm -hmm. or bragging or chest beating. Um, toiling away in obscurity is no way to spend your <laughs> spend your time on earth, especially when you realize you have talent that others need. So yes. seeing it as a matchmaking service with salespeople too, we know that it takes some eight to 14 touches now to break through the noise. Everybody's so busy, you know, that the, the cold call, mm -hmm. the warm call, whatever it is, yeah. it's just taking more and more time. So the extent that you have people who opened those doors for you. Oh, you know who you need to talk to? John Golden is the man. I heard Sima once and you know she got a standing ovation. 
when you have people doing that for you and the opportunities come to you, that's magic. Yeah, no, it absolutely is. And especially, and then just uh, <clears throat> bringing it back to what we we're talking about at the very beginning about your brand is once people do that, and then they're able to point, say, just check them out on check them out online, or let me send you their LinkedIn. You're going to say you're going to love this person. They're going to be able to help you. So you have to have the the brand to back it up. Yeah, and you you know you raise a really good point. People don't realize the extent to which people who believe in them will simply just forward their profile. Mm-hmm. And because, you know, I couldn't possibly summarize John Golden as well as John can. Here's his profile. Let me share that with you. But mm. what if your profile is one of those sad, anemic, no photo profiles? Yeah, no, yeah. nobody's getting any love, right? <laughs> so you have to make it easy for your network to open doors for you. I mean, it, that's how it works, right? You give it. Yeah. Exactly. And if you and you need to take pride in how you turn up, how you show up online, just like you. I mean, would you turn up for a formal event or a wedding or a party wearing, you know, your old raggy shorts and a T-shirt? You know, well, it depends on the kind of parties you go to, I guess. But if it was a formal occasion, no, you wouldn't. Um, So don't do that online. Look online and say, am I in a raggy T-shirt and shorts when I should be in formal attire? (laughs) Right, right. And, you know, there's some there's some very hip, very well-known um, thought leaders out there who are very comfortable dropping the F-bomb. Mm-hmm. But for the rest of us, <laughs> yeah. maybe clean it up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I preach this all the time, Sim, and it's like, it, it, it's like you, will, you will never, never be dinged for being polite, no. <laughs> being grammatically correct, being formal until you are invited not to, to be casual, you will never get dinged for being overdressed. But I guarantee you, you haven't. You will get dinged sometimes for the opposite. You will get dinged for being underdressed, for being too 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 casual or or familiar before you've been offered. All of those things. So I always say, like, go to the other and allow yourself to be brought back, but Absolutely. but don't do it the other way around. Don't assume. Yeah, my mom always told me that, you know, dress for the position you want and it takes yeah. money to make money and sort of all this sort of old school. She was depression era trying to always sort of embolden me to mm-hmm. seek out what I wanted. You know, I, I tell this story sometimes about my first job out of school and it was a, a, a down market, not like today. I mean, I was looking mm-hmm. under couch cushions mm-hmm. and of course you were faxing resumes and cutting mm-hmm. one ads out of the the Sunday paper. I mean, it was, I mean, I'm totally yeah. kidding myself. I mean, I was uh, no. a hundred years old, don't I? But yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm 105. So, you know, <laughs> there you go. I, uh, you know, I got a job as a secretary in a marketing department of a fortune 500 power tool manufacturer. There's nothing less sexy on earth, <laughs> but I wore a suit to work every day. First of all, it's all I owned. <laughs> uh-huh. And, you know, I sat in a chair with no arms and the, mm-hmm. and the chair was a way of telling everybody else how low on the totem pole I was. And I was oh. very mindful of that. And I didn't get business cards. And so I asked for business cards. And they said, well, it's not your pay grade. To which I replied, well, then I'll print my own. I mean, even then we could do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I asked if they would print mine to say marketing assistant instead of secretary. Same thing, right? Yep. Yep. But it was how I wanted to be known as a marketer, even back then and so word choice and being mm-hmm. specific in your language now if you tell a marketer that you're a marketer it's meaningless are you b2b yeah, are you b2c yeah. are you what what are you right i'm in sales sales of what right yeah, exactly so the word choice matters the language chatters but none of it is enough if you don't also live live the role act the part in your yeah. in your daily you know outreach. exactly and if you don't have some pride in what you do, I mean, because at the end of the day, if you're if you're if you're proud of what you do, as you right. say, your airplane pitch becomes a lot easier because it'll be more natural. Yeah. You won't be you won't be giving a pitch. You'll just be telling people, hey, this is me. Yeah. If you're excited about who you are and what you do, tell your face and let that come. Yeah. <laughs> you're talking about yourself. That's it. Yeah. Sure. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's excellent. All right, well, we're bumping up against the end of our time here, um, Sima. Um, all of Sima's information will be in her contributor profile, so you can find out. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Well, I help people create demand for who they are and what they do. 
I work on personal branding up through social selling. I do that in the enterprise for associations, the sales teams, and on occasion, I do that with private coaching. And you can learn more at simadol.com. Yeah, and as I said, all of that information will be in Simma's profile. Listen, this has been fantastic. I've really enjoyed the conversation today. So My name I. is John Thank Golden you. from Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeline SCRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.